Welcome to Thatcham Photographic Club Global Headquarters once more. And um, tonight uh, I've got just a couple of things to talk about uh, with regards to face-to-face -face meetings and things. The first one is we've uh, been talking about the annual barbecue. And uh, it, August time is when we would normally have one. And we said, well, should we be having one this year? Maybe actually it might be a nice way to get together socially, observing all the, the, the rules and regulations, of course. So we, we had a chat with the football club and they said that we can hold a barbie there, um, but it has to be a maximum of 30 people. So that kind of says we can't have non-members there. So partners and things um, can only be the members to, to keep numbers to 30. Uh, we can do it outside and if the weather's not good, obviously we can go indoors in the main hall. The main hall's big enough for us to have plenty of spacing. Uh, so we can make the space work. Thatcher and Football Club said that they would do a table service for drinks and then we'll do the cooking of the meat and the veggie stuff. Uh, so burgers, sausages, buns, also sort of ready-made individual cakes um, we can do as well. So yeah, there won't be any cross-contamination or anything like that. But you guys would have to bring your own salads, um, not cookery, crockery, um, cutlery, all that, and any, um, you know, pickles or, or whatever you want to put on your salad and, and, your, and ketchup and things on your burger. Uh, so we could do it on Sunday the 23rd. We thought we could do it at two in the afternoon and that gives everyone time to get there and everyone time to go home and do other stuff. And um, the club will fund it. Um, we figure, you know, we've not been spending an awful lot of money since lockdown. So, you know, there's plenty of money in the bank. Uh, so it might be a nice thing if we um, don't have to pay an extra fee for the Barbie. So we'll do that. <clears throat> so I guess the big question is the first one. Um, if we organise this, would you come and would you do it? And uh, we asked the question about face to face meetings and all the feedback was very positive And yes, let's do it. Uh, so I guess, you know, the question is the same one for the barbecue. So again, don't worry about telling me now if you can um, pop it in an email, that'd be good. Obviously, if you don't want to do it or you wouldn't attend, then uh, I need to know that so that we can gauge uh, how we could do this. But if we can get anything up to 30 people interested, then we'll go ahead and do it. Um, so just thought that would be something to consider. And if you want to put that or pencil that date in your diary for now, then, um, you know, you're, if we do go ahead with it and you do want to come, then you'll know all the details. Regarding our first face-to-face -face meeting, the overwhelming feedback was yes, let's do it. Uh, so it will be our first um, meeting as such, although the Barbie now uh, technically I suppose could be the first meeting. What we thought for the ninth would be just a general catch-up, no formal presentations or speakers just a general social gathering uh, so we can just say hi and uh, tick off the list, all the people that are still alive, all that kind of stuff. And um, maybe we'll do a slideshow. So if you've got, I, I can use the project uh, vote photos to make a slideshow. Uh, but if you've got any specific uh, lockdown photos that you haven't sent in or you'd like to include, then you can send those to me and we'll put them in a slideshow and just have them, you know, going on in the background um, whilst we socially gather at a distance. Uh, we've worked out a way of doing the raffle electronically. So no tickets, so there'll be no contamination issues of um, handling, handing things to each other. The prizes obviously will be sanitized. 
um, and there'll be a bucket. So it'll be coins only, no change given. You drop the coins in a bucket of antiseptic liquid. Um, and that's the way we'll collect the money. Uh, again, table service for the bar. Uh, at the moment, it looks like we can do it based on all the current guidelines, but it looks like we'll have to wear face masks uh, during it, possibly. Uh, but anyway, nearer the time, these guidelines may change and then we'll adopt whatever guidelines uh, are appropriate at the time. So that's what we think we're going to do. Uh, if that changes, we'll let you know. But um, unless we hear um, to the contrary from the government or from the football club or from you guys, then that's what we're planning. Okay. Um, so let's get on to the real purpose we're all here and that is to uh, listen to our speaker uh, Jacqueline she goes by the name of Jax uh, Jacqueline is uh, my daughter-in-law so I'm keeping it in the family tonight um, but um, she's going to talk to us about uh, food photography and uh, going from becoming a, an amateur not really used to using a camera uh, to now uh, getting uh, getting money for it. Um, so I think it's appropriate that we hand over to her so that she can tell you her story. So I will stop sharing. Uh, Jacqueline, if you'd like to unmute yourself. Yeah. And share your screen and then away you go. I will stay unmuted. So if you need help or whatever, just call. Okay, thank you. Okay. Oh, hi guys. Um, thank you so much for inviting me, Ray. Um, as you've already said, you're my father-in-law and I believe you actually had my dad maybe a year or two ago in the club and he was doing some stuff on um, plane photography, specifically war aircraft. So yeah, definitely keeping it in the family. Um, so just a few points on what I'm going to chat to you about this evening um, a bit about me, how I got into food photography, different styles of food photography, um, how to style food and touching on props, backdrops and lighting, a little bit on processing and a little bit on food on social media. So straight in. Um, I'm Jax. Um, Sorry, I'm just moving my not so good on it. So okay. Um I work as a social media consultant predominantly. Um, but I'm also doing food photography as Ray just mentioned. Um relatively new project for me to be honest. Um I'm a big foodie, very passionate about cooking it, eating it, taking pictures of it, talking about it, making a career out of it. Um, all of my pictures are taken with a Nikon D3300 or on my iPhone. I've got an 11 Pro and you can find me online at Jacqueline Buckland Photography and you can also get me on Instagram at Food Photographer Manchester. Oh, and just to add, if anybody has any questions throughout, um, just unmute yourself and let me know. So how I got into food photography, um, basically it was just a hobby. Um, I started off by just taking pictures of things that I was making at home, that I was eating out, playing with kind of different angles, taking the pictures. I think I'd kind of naturally lean towards this Instagram style of photography where it's this very kind of um, aerial shot or flat lay as um, I would now refer to it as. Um, predominantly all square images. And that is purely because Instagram, when it first launched, um, it was all square images. You couldn't post um, vertical or landscape. So that's just kind of where I started really. And then Christmas 2015, um, my husband bought me my camera. And that is when I started just getting to grips with the equipment really. Um, not so much food at the time, very much I was more into kind of landscapes, architecture, bridges were quite a big thing. I was really into travel, so I'd, you know, take my camera with me. 
and the bottom right hand image is where I kind of fell in love I guess to say with depth of field so this was on our honeymoon in Hawaii and I just became obsessed with the lava fields um, and I must have spent maybe 20-30 minutes just focusing <laughs> on this one bit of lava just taking pictures of it and working on the depth of field and I think that's where the kind of more pro photography that, that that passion came from and then the biggest turning point specifically on food was last summer I did a workshop on food photography um, and it was very much focused around light, um, styling, props, backdrops, lenses and depth of field. So there's a picture of me getting into the workshop. Um, and these are some of the images that I shot there. So as I mentioned, I already had knowledge of the camera, um, but I wouldn't say I'm, I went in as a pro. This is still kind of amateur level but this was much more about learning how to compose the image so for example on this one I've used the backdrops to create lines to add um, some kind of dynamic feeling into the image something that's relatively simple to photograph um, with the leaves there the plate and the scissors so it's probably kind of simplistic natural shot um, cherries which are very in season again at the moment so this was playing around with different backdrops so I've got that kind of dark earthy which goes very well with the, the bronze pot and the black napkin and it's making the, the, the redness in the cherry it's bringing it really out to, to, to draw your eyes in into the focal point um, this was another one with the leaves, the mint leaves. Um, again, very simplistic. And what I was doing here was playing, playing with height um, and testing props again, again with the scissors. This one, I was exploring the room. Um, they'd left loads of different food items for us to photograph. So this was flapjacks and I went on a hunt for um, a chopping boards and a kind of honey, honey piece in the, in the background there in the pot. And I was working on height and laying, laying the flapjacks in different ways. Um, again, to, to draw your eyes into the focus. And the final one from that shoot is this bowl of hummus. And what I was doing here was really testing the natural light. So I actually took this on the floor on my hands and knees. In fact, I think I was laid fully flat. And I took it right next to the window. So I had the direct light coming straight onto the hummus. So you can see the oil in there is, um, is reflecting the light from the window. And I think that's the main thing that I love about food photography is it's, it's drawing you in and it, it looks real on the screen and it's making you want to kind of reach out and dip the bread into the hummus. It's, it's very inviting. So that's the, the kind of the history and the, and the workshop that I did that, that started the passion. And then, as I mentioned before, I'm really into um, cooking food as well. So I did a recipe for a spiced pumpkin cake in October last year, just before Halloween. And it tasted pretty good. I was taking some pictures of it and I thought, I've always had a dream to, you know, have an image and a recipe on, on a food site. So I typed it up and I sent it to um, Baking Heaven magazine and just said, you know, here's an image, here's the recipe. If you want to use it, then, you know, please feel free. And the journalist replied to me straight away and said, love this beautiful image. It's, it's really bright. Um, I'll, I'll definitely post it. And she put it on the website, which was on the home page for about a week. And she also sent it out in the newsletter. Um, to on email to all of the subscribers and I just thought that was you know quite a big a big turning point for me with the food photography as, as I mentioned it was it was a dream and like yeah a dream that came true and I just got to thinking really oh if if they were interested as a magazine I wonder if you know other places might be and I was starting to think about the other passions that I have with food so kind of eating out so at the beginning of this year, I turned my thoughts towards um, restaurants and different 
kind of styles of photography and thinking about what I wanted to explore. So looking at the different styles, there's four main, main types of food photography and they are pack shots, editorial, packaging and advertising. And I'll just kind of briefly chat about each one. So pack shops, they are generally used um, for press. So magazines, I'm sure when, you, when you're flicking through magazines, you might see pictures of a camera, for example, or beauty if it's in the makeup section. It's, it's the product cut out, normally placed on a white background, nothing else, very simple. Or you might see it with online shopping. So if you're doing, you know, your Waitrose food shop and you can see um, what you're adding to your basket, it's generally shops like this. And quite often they'll be shared on social media as well. Very kind of simple, easy to enlarge and they look nice on a, on a plain background. Or you can cut them out and you can put different backdrops on them. Advertising. So these type of shots are generally used on menus. So maybe not so much when you sit down in the restaurant they're more just words aren't they um but if you're looking ahead on the website you'll quite often see um that the dish the dish is made up and it's all about making them look looking appealing and trying to show the product in in its best light before you order it billboards so something like this mcdonald's example you'd probably see this if you're going through the drive through or a big billboard alongside the motorway, for example, uh, you might potentially see on leaflets as well, this, this kind of advertising. And then food photography on packaging. So pretty much any form of packet um, that it's on there. So I've just given a couple of examples here with some, with some soup um, and, and some pasta. It's pretty straightforward. I personally don't find it that exciting, um, but you know, there's, there's a need for it out there, so there's, there's still money to be made. And then editorial, um, which is my favourite, and that's what I've really fallen in love with. And the main use for this is, you know, to make food look beautiful. Um, you'll mainly see this style of photography in magazines. So if you've got Good Food magazine, for example, or say the Tesco magazine, if you're flicking through that, you'll see this kind of um, very stylized um, sets with lots of props and lighting um, and quite often you'll have um, a food stylist and a photographer and quite often a director as well working on the shoot it can be pretty complex so thinking about the the, the styling um, and the props specifically for um, the editorial side of photography I've just kind of shared a few tips and things that I have picked up over the last couple of months um, the main thing is the food really needs to be best in class. I think get the chef every time to make the dish. If you're working with restaurant or even if it's something that you would buy in the supermarket and, and cook at home, if you're wanting to show that on you know, social media and magazines, whatever it is, it needs to look absolutely amazing. Um, I do sometimes cook um, items here and photograph them, but you know i think i'm an okay cook but i do think it's best if you if you use some one top top skill top chef um no spillages smears or kind of excess sauce on the plate one big tip that i have for that is using um cotton buds or q-tips as they call them in america um you can literally you know get into the plate and you can get into all little nooks and crannies and clear away any excess sauce um, same with, I don't know, if the chef has passed you a bowl and there's like a fingerprint of, of sauce, using a cloth to get rid of it, the, the plate itself needs to really shine. Um, if you're photographing hot food, I would say um, make sure the set is completely ready to go, everything's set up and styled, and you bring in the food last minute. Some people like to have the steam and some people like to shoot it cold. I've so far never done a dish that's actually had hot steam um, so I've not had to, to deal with that yet um, but I think that'll be an interesting challenge when I do. Um, if you're shooting something that's maybe got a packet 
or a box or something in it. Just make sure it's completely new and unopened. You don't want to be photographing a box that's got, you know, a dent in it or a crease or when you've opened it and closed it, it starts to have that, that fold. Just make sure everything looks really pristine. Um, make sure the food is supported. So for example, if you're doing a burger, you can put a cocktail stick um, through the center of it and that will just ensure that it's got structure and it, it, it stays upright. A great tip that I picked up is to carry makeup sponges. So they're just little kind of foam triangles and what they're great for is um, they start off really thin and go to maybe half an inch thick. And what you can do is you can tuck them underneath the plate or props and it'll just give you a tiny little bit of lift um, when, you're, when you're shooting. And the final one is to prepare food as you normally would. So if you were gonna be, I don't know, using tomatoes for example wash them and then what you get is these really nice kind of fresh water droplets running down the skin and it just adds to that kind of mouth watering effect making you really want to kind of reach out and and taste the food in an image and then it's moving on to the most important thing for me i don't think this is even specific to food photography it's all photography it's all about telling a story so this is a shoot that I did in Manchester in February for, um, it's just a, a local restaurant. It's kind of a, a brunch and lunch place called um, Time Out. And I went in to shoot, um, it was mainly their brunch dishes and I did um, milkshake and cocktails for them. So this is um, the restaurant you can see in the background is the, the window looking out onto some houses and they gave me this milkshake. So my challenge was to kind of tell the story and they wanted it relatively clean and crisp. They've got quite a young market. So hence the, the kind of vibrant straw, um, the, the chocolate sauce, it's, it's pretty millennial place. So I took some of my backdrops along, which I'll run you through later on in the presentation. But this is how I set it up. It was in the window. Um, I had light coming in from the right hand side. So I used the reflector on the left just to bounce that back ever so slightly. And then I used um, quite a distressed background at the back to get some nice texture. And then a relatively neutral one at the bottom so that I could keep the focus on the height. And then these are the two shots that I took away for them. So the one on the left, as you can see, it's very plain. It's very, it's very focused on just the milkshake. And the one on the right is the one that I actually prefer because it tells a little bit more of a story. It's got the, it's an Oreo milkshake and it's got an Oreo broken up in front of it. So it kind of alludes to the fact that maybe there's someone else there. Maybe they've also had an Oreo and, you know, a few bits have crumbled on down to the milkshake and now it's building up to the star of the event, the milkshake. It's kind of, it's leading you up to the glass and kind of tempting you in. And then this, um, I've done literally today, please don't judge it, it's in no way a finished um, set of images, but what I wanted to do was show you how I would build up um, the kind of food styling and, and, and story for a shoot. So, I've selected my, my backdrops. I've got the same one there, that kind of distressed look um, and a simple wooden floor. And then I'm gonna be photographing some milk. So it's Armoured Breeze. It's created specifically for coffee. So I thought, okay, coffee, I can bring that into the shop. So I started to build it out. So we've got our product. Then I've added the product in a glass of milk. So for some shots, you could leave it as that quite simple. That would work really well as an advertising shot. But to take it a bit further, I've added some coffee on a spoon. A little bit more, I've added some coffee at the side, a little bit spilling out. And then finally, I've added in a mug. So we've gone from something quite simple just as a glass of milk and then bringing it forward to oh, okay yeah I see the bigger picture now I can make coffee with that milk it all ties together to tell a story and I think that's why I love the <coughs> the editorial so much because it allows you to have that kind of creative control on on building out the story 
And I've just added in here a few of the editorial examples um, that I've done. So this was a, um, a shoot for a local cheese deli near my house. Um, I did a shoot for them for Valentine's Day. So they had this um, heart shaped cheese. Um, this was actually a really good shoot. It was uh, one cracker for the shoot, one cracker for me. <laughs> Always a bit of a temptation with boob top free. So you can see that the, the, the cheese with the heart, I've cut it into two and that was to represent um, it's two people there for Valentine's sharing the cheese. And then I've built the story out in the background with two glasses of wine. There's some figs there. We can see some grapes. Uh, they're all things that kind of come together with cheese and a plate um, to, to serve it on. And then this is a kind of a wider story where it's not so much just about one product. I've brought it out to cheese in general and, and, and things that you might have with it. So I've added in some bread, some crackers, um, some olives. Um, you can't see them too clearly, but the salami at the back, I actually made into roses by um, folding it all up and then peeling sections back. Um, I've got some shots of it separately where you can, you can see it more clearly, but hopefully you get from the picture, it's telling a, a wider story. Um, and this was from the same shoot. Um, they also stock a small amount of drinks in the shop. And this one was for Didsbury Gin. It was raspberry and elderflower. So I've added some raspberries into the front of the shot um, just to kind of amplify the, the, the flavorings of the gin that it's raspberry. And then we're still keeping the cheese to the side there with the heart. So we know it's Valentine's Day and the pink ties it quite nicely together. Um, and then this one was again for a shoot for um, Almond Breeze. So it's milk again. And this one is specifically almond milk. So I've added in some almonds, a few at the front, kind of scattered around, coming out of the, the, the glass jar that you can see um, slightly out of focus at the bottom. And then in the background, I've added some empty milk bottles um, and just to the right of it, I've um, put it in a milk bottle and I've used a blue straw to complement the blue in the packaging um, to make just a very kind of young, vibrant image, which was um, to be used on, on that Instagram feed. And then the final one in this is for the English tea shop. So this was... Um, cocoa and coconut flavored tea um, so what i did here was stick with the, with the brown um packaging and looked at complementary background colors with the the brown and the little fairy lights there and then i've used um a clear glass so you can see the liquid and then what i did was place it was two or three of the fairy lights behind the glass so that you can see the light shining through just to add a little bit more interest into the image. Oh, I thought that was the last one. There's another one. They just keep coming. Um, this was only a few weeks ago. Um, I did um, a shoot for a company in London that sells fish. Um, this was cod that they wanted styling as if it had just been cooked, just been prepared in, in the pan. So I cooked the fish and made sure I'd kind of seasoned it well and a little bit of brown on the top because I think sometimes fish, especially cod, can be a little bit uninteresting to, to photograph because it's white, so I want some colour on the top. And then I've added in some dill garnish, um, some garlic and some lemon, just to add a little bit of colour into the pan. It's got to be the last one in this section, sorry. <laughs> um, this one I really enjoyed taking. I'd never done anything with ice before. Um, so what I did was I bought a very dark blue backdrop and underneath the ice cubes, I put a clear plastic bag um, directly onto the vinyl. And I got loads of ice, smashed it up and then put the ice on the bag. And the reason I did that was because I wanted more light to reflect from the bag and, and lift the color of the ice. Um, and then I placed the fish on top, which is that they wanted um, to show the, the raw, um, the raw kind of preparation of the fish at this point. So I just seasoned it lightly. And I think, um, yeah, it, it brings out that, that kind of tempting, ready to cook, fresh, fresh feeling and the blue echoes the sea. And that leads us on to backdrops and lighting. So these are the, the backdrops that I have um, in vinyl. 
um, different colors. So the red one on the left, you might, um, I did that in the, in the cheese shot. The marble one I would use for something quite neutral. The blue I use for the fish, this kind of um, pink one, pink and orange. I haven't actually used that yet, um, but I think something like, I don't know, tacos or something Mexican would look really nice on that. Very young kind of pop feeling. The brown, um, I used that for the tea with the lighting in the background. Again, neutral with the wood. And then the dark wood, I think is quite nice for anything quite rustic. And then there's a lighter wood just to the right of it. These are about 10 to 12 pounds each. I think I got all of these from Amazon. Um, and they're about a one kind of size. So they're, they're pretty good. Um, and I guess they're, they're pretty waterproof as well. So if you have got like ice, for example, I probably had ice on it for probably half an hour and it, it held up, it didn't, it didn't tear. I probably wouldn't leave it on much longer because I could see if it, it was starting to warp and kind of thin out, but it's still absolutely fine. It can be used again. I, I maybe wouldn't put too much wet stuff on it again, but they're, they're pretty durable for, for the price. And then backdrops, these are um, the, uh, two different sizes. The small one is 40 centimeters and the big one is 60. I think the smaller ones were 18 pounds each and the bigger one was 40 pounds. So they're much higher price point. And I think this is where you get into photography is, can be quite an expensive hobby. Um, but I much prefer working with them um, with the boards because they're just a bit more structured. You can stand them up. Um, whereas the vinyls, they're great for flat lay, but if you want them for background, I quite often have to um, blue tack or sellotape them to the wall. And then sometimes they start to fall down or if they curve a little bit, you start getting light reflections. That's just, yeah, it's, it's a little bit annoying, but for, for the price point, you, you really can't argue. But the, the boards are, are really great. I can send you some links to where I got them from if anybody's interested. Um, there's, there's two companies that I use. Um, and then just to give you an example of using the boards in, in some of the shots that I've taken. So this was a shoot that I did for the Mushroom Bureau and I've used that brown flat lay one um because i wanted a kind of rustic image to complement the chestnut mushrooms the loaf of bread the wooden board it's that kind of very dark rustic feeling and then i've brought a little bit of color into it with the, the fresh leaves and and the linen the next one i've used a mixture of a blue vinyl and a white board and I've added in some paper just to to break up the shot a little bit more and I've used um, lines within it just to make the images a little bit more dynamic and interesting to the eye. This one I've used the dark purple board and um, I think the purple goes really well with kind of desserts especially anything chocolatey um, it just it really helps to make it look more luxurious and I guess chocolate is like that as well it's, it's it's more tempting and then these are just plain backgrounds that I use for pepperami um for valentine's day actually so the one on the left the green is to um complement the green packaging but it stands out with the logo and and the meat on the shot and then the one on the right um, was purely for Valentine's Day that I used the red um, and the red and green just really kind of pop against each other. And they again were to use on social media. Um, so to touch on lighting, I only shoot with natural light, which um, my husband says I'm crazy for because apparently it's quite difficult. But to be honest, that's all I've ever really known. So I quite like it. Um, my kitchen is is very well lit. There's um, like two big windows there. So what I tend to do is literally move my dining table around the other side of the kitchen and use that as my studio, I guess. Um, if I'm out on location, I will try and um, shoot next to the window, as I mentioned before with the, um, the milk shot, the, the milkshake image. And um, I do realize that that makes it difficult if I was ever gonna do any 
nighttime photography or if I was doing a restaurant shoot where they were underground or you know not next to the window so I I know that I am limiting myself there and also it gets pretty difficult after five o'clock and um, obviously that changes throughout the year and um, but I find at the moment especially in my kitchen with the sun going down that's kind of the the last time that I can do shot in the day um, and then the reason that I do that is because like I said at the beginning like I'm still pretty new to this I'm not very experienced with lights and the stuff that I have done with them I find that they can actually be quite harsh on shot so I do prefer the the kind of natural light and I've put a picture in here that shows I'll do anything to get the light <laughs> um, so what I was doing here I was doing some pack shot photography and the the sun behind me was just getting in the way so I grabbed one of my one of my boards stuck it on my head and it worked really well for the shop and then recently i purchased this so it's basically um a mobile light studio made with led lights um it's pretty small i, I think it's probably 30 by 30 it's, it's just a, a little box it comes flat packed um, and you just fold it in to make this kind of square pop-up and it comes with six different I don't know if you can see from the image but it's like a white backdrop cloth that's hung into it there's six different colors so there's white there's green so you can use it essentially as a green screen to cut things out and then on the right hand side you can see it lit up so there's 40 little led lights in there and they go up to four different brightnesses and they've got different hues on there and what I've been using them for is um, pack shots so I've just kind of given an example there on the left and um, this was again for the mushroom bureau shoot and what they wanted to use the images for was to send to journalists for magazines and they needed um, just pure cutout shots and then I just kind of for, for today just took a picture of the apple so you could see what it was like against the the white backdrop and obviously that's without any processing and this is the outcome that I got with them um, I was really pleased it was it was 14 pounds on Amazon that box and yeah I think the shots have come out really well um, some may say it's cheating I say it's um, clever thinking what I did here was I took some shots with and without the packaging and um, so I, I laid them down flat took a picture with the packaging on took the packaging off and then took another shot of just the mushrooms by themselves. And then what I did was, well, not so much me, um, with some help of my husband, who's a designer, he cut the labels out for me um, and placed them on the top. And the reason we did that was because um, the company that sent me the mushrooms, they didn't tell me what day they were gonna be arriving until they'd already been sent. And they arrived um, at my door in 25 degree heat and there was about 30 boxes of mushrooms and I just didn't have anywhere to store them. So what was happening was the heat in the room was making condensation on the packaging and me and my husband, we were taking off the packaging, kind of wiping them down with tissues to get rid of the moisture, rewrapping them back up and taping the, the back. It was a bit of a nightmare to be honest but the shots just weren't coming out crisp so we did this as a way to to work around it and I actually think they've come out really nice and as I say it was a relatively cheap piece of kit um that I've used again for one of my clients in social media to photograph some of her beauty products um so it's yeah it's really handy and then to touch on processing ever so slightly um, I absolutely cannot stand Photoshop. I don't know if there's anyone else that feels the same one here, but I just find it so difficult. I just can't process it. My husband uses it for a career and he keeps explaining things to me and I just, I just don't get it. And yeah, it's, it's a challenge. <laughs> so I tend to avoid it where possible and I tend to favor Lightroom. Um, I, I don't do a lot to my images, to be honest. I might, you know, boost saturation, um, 
crop them slightly, add a little bit of brightness, sometimes, you know, sharpen. I don't, I, I say, I don't, I don't do a lot in, in terms of processing, but again, I am at the beginning kind of end of this all. So as I continue to grow in it, it might be something that I do use more of. And then I just wanted to, to share a few stats with you. As I mentioned, I work in social media. So I'm one of those annoying people that likes to take pictures of everything that they eat <laughs> and document it online. Um, so just looking specifically at Instagram, um, hashtag food is used 250 million times a month. I just think that is insane. The amount of people that are on that platform talking about food. 69% uh, of millennials take a picture of their meal before eating it and post it. I'm one of those people. Food lovers consume four times more content than the average user by logging in 18 times a day on average. It's crazy stats. People love it. 27% um, of users share food content and 38% of people view food content on the channel. So it's it's absolutely huge. Um, and then I've dropped in here a gallery of some of the shots that I've done for um, commission. So this was for a company called The Dish Batch, um, dishes that are dispatched, I guess. So this was, um, was a food shot. Um, yeah, I think we already talked about this one previously, but I really like it. I've dropped on the sides of the slide. Um, the shutter speeds, ISO, and the aperture settings for you. This was another one from the from the fish shoot. So this was um, they wanted it plating up. This was the cod. This one was for the mushroom bureau. Very earthy. You can see all of the chopped mushrooms in the background, and I've cut one in half to use as the focus at the front. This one I took on my phone as a flat lay image. Um, this one they posted on Instagram. I had a look, it's had 15,800 likes and 57 comments. And this one again was around prep. So chopping, getting ready to cook. Um, this one's had 22,661 likes. 59 comments and it was this shoot that I um I got as my first commissioned work and this was um through a PR agency in London they're a specific food and drink agency and a friend of mine works there she'd seen that I went pro and it was her that asked me to do the the pepperami shoot which I did for free and then she came back and commissioned me for this one. So I, as I say, I only did this last month. Um, and yeah, I'm really, really proud. This one was for the cheese shop, as I mentioned before, for Valentine's Day. They put this out on their social media and they have added me onto their list of photography suppliers. Hopefully now that lockdown's easing, I'll get to go back. And then, yeah, any, any questions? I've, I have one. Um, firstly, let me say thank you, Jacqueline. That was really good. So thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, do you want to run share? Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, I, you, you didn't mention white balance. Um, if you're using daylight and sometimes the LEDs um, in the little studio what are you doing about white balance yeah I, I didn't mention that so in Lightroom I'm just boosting that right up specific mainly on the fish there was a lot to do on the fish actually with the ice that there was a lot of uh, yeah white balance in that yeah Paul hey you got to unmute mate <laughs> um, it's your space bar. Hit space bar, Paul, as you talk. 
Hey, Sam, Ben. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that was really good. Thank you very much. Do you use non-food products on your photography, like engine oil we've heard been used before, as opposed to honey or syrup or something? Ah, um, I don't, but I know that some people do. So I tend to keep things quite natural unless I'm doing something, like I said, with the tomatoes where I'd put water on them. But some people do spray oil to, to get a shine. I think may, potentially further down the line as I get into this more, it might be something that I look at. But at the moment, I'm very focused on keeping everything very natural. Good, thank you. Um, so, Jax, um, you... You said, um, I was going to ask you how much you do, how many of your photo shoots you do at home and how many you do on location. I mean, you did say that a little bit. And it's especially interesting towards the end when you were talking about the mushrooms you had delivered and the pitfalls. <laughs> um, so how much time do you get to prepare a shoot, a shoot you're going to do? For, so for instance, with the, with the fish or when you're using props like um, straws and scissors, like the milkshake, um, do you discuss that with your client and then you, you maybe um, ask them what sort of theme they want, what their, you know, what their client base is and then you, do you, so they might show you the milkshake so you have a little think about how you're going to bring that out. How does that work? So they'll usually write a brief um, or I'll ask for a brief um, and they'll literally tell me what the product is, what the kind of style that they want, any do's and don'ts, what channels they're going to be on, like kind of all of the background stuff. Mm -hmm. And then they'll normally send me a link um, on the website for, for the product so that I can have a look. Um, and they'll quite often send me a shot list of examples, things that they've seen that they want it's something like, yeah. similar. Yeah. yeah, so that's when I'll kind of be like, okay, I know the kind of style that they want. And I'll start thinking about what props um, I might need, what what backdrops do I need to buy a new backdrop or I've already got something that will work props I'd say for each shot that I've done I've had to buy something new so I tend to roll that roll that in um, and I've now got a cupboard full of props which is quite handy <laughs> um, I normally have a couple of weeks um prep time um, and then sometimes I'll go into a recce so I did a recce of the um the place with the milkshake because I, I had eaten there before but I just wanted to check it out because if it's somewhere that I'm going to struggle with light then I'd potentially ask them if I could shoot it at home mm -hmm. so I've done only one shot out actually just that one and the rest has been at the house oh really that's really good yeah it's interesting because you know your light at your house don't you so where mm -hmm. I, I am I've got really good light source and I use natural light because I I do a bit of food photography. And um, so I've got a skylight and a west facing window in my kitchen. So I do a lot of, of it in my kitchen. What I don't do in my kitchen, I do in the garden. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can <laughs> do a dark awesome. corner actually. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so yeah, it does lend itself, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm sorry, I'm gonna monopolize you a bit. Um, just tell me off, if anybody wants me to shut up, just say. <laughs> when you, um, so your first job, you got through writing an email to the company, the magazine. So first of all, what made you choose that magazine? And then what happened after that? How did you get noticed? So it wasn't so much a, a job. I did, I did it for free. Yeah. Um, so I just, I read the magazine because um, it's, it's only, there's two of them. There's um, Food Heaven and Baking Heaven. And mm. I'd been reading the, the baking one and I just thought, I'm just gonna get in touch with them. So I just looked online for the editor um, and their email address and just sent them an email and just said, I've written this recipe. Um, it was at the beginning of October. So it was, you know, it was seasonal. It was of interest to them. Um, and I had the picture and I just kind of said, you don't have to use it, but if you do, it's all there ready yeah. to go. And I had it linked on my, on my blog. And literally she replied straight away and she just said, thank you so much for this. It fits um, with the, the theme of what we're doing on the website. I'll drop you a link back. Um, great. And she did it straight away. So um, 
it was, yeah, it wasn't so much a job. It was just more of something yeah. that I always kind of something to do. test water and you know expand your program. Yeah. And yeah. I just thought, oh, if she kind of came back at a magazine, like, which is something, yeah. Pretty, Pretty up there I was like oh maybe there might be other people out there that, that are interested in my kind of style and that's that's kind of where it where it started and what was your next step so the next step was um doing the the cheese shoots and the the restaurant and I did those both for free I literally emailed the 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 managers of the restaurants and said look I'm a new photographer I'm local they're all small local businesses um please can I come and shoot some of your dishes to build up my portfolio and you can use all of the images wherever you want you know right as long as you want yeah that's really interesting and that's exactly yeah, they, they came back why wouldn't they want a free mm -hmm. shoot well yeah 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 um, I've, I've just I've had two free shoots recently doing virtually the same thing so and I've joined a little networking group of local business people. Um, okay. I did a little presentation today, so see if any that feeds anything back. So, but yeah, I, I think one of the one of things to uh, <laughs> to understand is how do you transition from doing it for free to okay. yeah. For free? Right. yeah. So specifically with those two shoots, it's so annoying because I did them in February. And the restaurant said, oh, I've actually got another bit of the business. They, they did um, like corporate supplies for businesses doing like lunches and stuff. And he said, oh, I could really do with a refresh on the imagery for that. Um, so we were going to talk about doing a paid shoot and yeah. then lockdown, lockdown hit. So yeah, it's been a bit annoying, but I was thinking I might pick up back with him now that everyone's reopening again and see if there is an opportunity. Do I get to eat the food? Yes, you do. <laughs> um, and again, with the cheese one, he loved the, the Valentine shoe. And he said, right, I'll put you next on my, on my list. And I actually offered them both a lifetime discount of um, half price. Because I said, you've taken a chance on me. Therefore, I'm going to kind of mm, yeah, give you a discount type thing. So, yeah, they both said they want to do another shoe. Just unfortunately, lockdown happened. Um, but I would say where I get most um, inquiries for photography and um, social media is LinkedIn. So share oh, I was going to do share your work on there um, and hashtags. So hashtags like food photographer, freelance photographer, photographer, where you are, just keywords all related to, to keywords on your website there. as well. Cause you're, yeah. What's that, sorry? And keywords on your website, what would you use for that? Yeah, so again, the, the same freelance photographer, food mm. photographer, food stylist, anything that's in that kind of foodie world yeah. that makes it easy for people to yeah. find you. Yeah. And then Instagram and Pinterest um, are another two. It's all about being, being seen. Um, so I got approached by a company two weeks ago and they're looking for someone to do um, photography and manage their social media. And there are... They're a crisp brand, but they make the crisps out of tortillas and they want editorial lifestyle shots. And yeah, she found me through Instagram, um, so, sorry, LinkedIn, um, through a post that I'd shared with some of my most recent shots that I'd done from the fish shoot. Um, so yeah, I'd say just stay active on the channels. Mm -hmm. um, and then if you've got, have you got a portfolio? Um, I a gallery, so yeah. Yeah, is that online gallery, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Um, very, very modest, Jax. Her pictures are stunning. She's oh, I've seen modest. them. She's amazing. Oh, no, no, Jax is yeah. amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Angela. Um, I would contact some um, PR agencies, specifically ones that have got food clients. So if there's a brand that you like, for example, go onto their website and they will normally have a media contact on there. And the media contact is usually a PR agency or um, like a brand manager or a PR manager. Yeah. And I would get in touch with them and just be like, hey, I'm a big fan of the brand. I'm also a photographer. Yeah. Here's an example of my work. Is there anything you know coming up that I can shoot for you? I can work from home or I could come to you on location. Mm -hmm. That kind of starts mm -hmm. the conversation. They will probably have a list of um, photographers that they already use 
but that's not to say that they wouldn't consider you like everyone's got to start somewhere i messaged um the editor of olive magazine last week and said um about christmas shots um and she came back to me the next day and she just said the style that you currently do isn't right for what we want at the moment but she said keep in touch like that could change and as i progress as a photographer we could have another conversation so i think just get in touch with people um my motto in life is all they can say is no so you might as well try do you put in a little folder of photographs or how do you link them to your so i send the link in the email right yeah i've got um on my website i've got a gallery page and i'll just send them the link to the gallery page hmm. okay thank you sorry i thrilled you I'll let no, no, no. Have a go. could try alan me as well and shut a cook they're both agencies that just you just send your pictures to them and they put them up for sale and when one of the food agencies wants a picture of cherries they go to alamy and they get all the pictures of cherries and they just pick the ones they want oh do you say stock um, images? Stock, stock. Stock. ah yeah yeah, yeah, that's another way you can put images on there and get paid for them. I've put some on there and I've not had any anybody buy any yet. But I think the way the stock sites work are they're very seasonal. So I get an email every month from iStock and Shutterstock, I think. And it tells you the themes of what people are buying. And at the moment, all of the food ones are related to restaurants and people in masks. So if you want to make some money, I would explore that. Um, going to high street with people that you know and sitting them down having having lunch outside in a restaurant with a mask on the table or waiting at the bar in a mask not exactly exciting food photography but it's uh try and get the make some money try and get the fork through the mask <laughs> so they're cherry picking at the moment then <laughs> oh <laughs> alamy you're up in oxfordshire uh, quite local to us um but they're quite picky on the photographs. They do <coughs> have very strict regulations of what you can send them quality wise. Oh yeah, massively. They, they, um, they vet every image and they have to be completely pin sharp in focus. If anything's not sharp, they'll reject it. If you send 200 pictures to them and one is not sharp, they'll reject all of them. Is that right? Oh, I didn't get that. They rejected them individually, but maybe some sites will do that. Alamy reject everything you send. Oh. One, one picture being wrong. I know because I've sent them 200 oh, pictures. Right. <laughs> you only got one right, Malcolm. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've got thousands on there and I get paid quite a lot, so I'm quite happy with them. Brilliant. Jax, when you take your photos, I noticed all of them have got a fairly sh slow shutter speed. Do you use a tripod? Yes and no. Most of them I do freehand. Um, some I do tripod, but I'd say 70% freehand. Got steady hands. <laughs> it's, because, it's mainly because of the angle. So what I need to do, a lot of this, this kind of style that I do is um, flat lay or kind of pointed down. And my tripod doesn't have the... Um, the kind of horizontal option where it pulls out and goes over so what i tend to do is handhold and um, but i am putting on my my santa list um a new tripod they're, they're just so expensive the cheapest one was 180 pounds three-legged friend yeah so i got a new ear from um uh, what do I get out from Amazon and that does uh, that's quite really good really um, does lots of movement and I can get the horizontal bar on it and that was about 80 pounds W-E-E-R I've just seen your father-in-law write it down on his uh, Christmas list for you Jack. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, <Ray. laughs> that, that new uh, um, brand seems to be popping up all over mm -hmm. I've I've been looking at continuous lighting rigs and uh, newer are, are appearing everywhere. Mm, I'll check them out. Thank you for that. There's a company called Ben do one for wildlife photography and you can move the legs and the head into any position from high in the sky to right on the ground and they're not expensive. Mm. Okay. 
I'll have a look. Well, it depends. If Santa's going to bring it, maybe she wants an expensive one. <laughs> Early Christmas. There you go, Jack. He's already committed himself. <laughs> no, I, 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 I. Thanks, oh, I don't even know it. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions in January? Let us know if you got one. <laughs> Any more questions? In that case, I will say a huge thank you, Jack, for, for what you yeah, did. Thank you. That was really good. Thank You're you. Awesome. Thanks for what time me, guys. Um, and uh, yeah, I think, well, I'm certainly hungry now. I don't know about you guys, but uh, uh, it certainly gives you a bit of inspiration. The other thing I particularly liked was you were talking about the creative side. We've, over the last few months in lockdown, we've been focusing a lot on the technical, uh, but the last couple of sessions, we've tried to focus more on the creative side and, uh, you know, your your insights into how you compose and tell the story of the um, of the food I think was uh, particularly useful and good uh, to uh, for help us with that so thank you. I'm actually um, really not a, a technical person at all I, I don't know much about the camera really. Well that's um, why you've got a husband right? Yeah um, so yeah it's more about the the creative side that I feel a great right. affinity with you because I'm just like that and also this when you were talking about how much you do not use photoshop I, I just hate it as well you, I'm just totally the same on every level with you on all those things and thank you so much for being so helpful and giving such a lot of info and and showing us your beautiful work it's really oh, inspiring you. thank you yeah, if you've got any other questions just message me on Instagram again oh, we yeah thank you we'll do was it what um what you don't know is that um Jacqueline's husband my son Phil and me there's a back channel um so when Jacqueline's stressing about doing photoshop editing there's a back channel between phil and me on how to resolve the question in in hand so she's got an army of techies behind her <laughs> i wish i was so lucky <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got I've got everyone here now. Oh, you're so big, and you've got yeah, you've got the plug. Yeah, you. <laughs> uh, right, so I'm gonna uh, do a, a screen share just to finish off. Uh, just got a couple of slides, and then I'll let all you guys go. Well, when you go there. So, uh, you lucky people have got me next week. Um, remember when we had Chris Harrison, he was talking about those uh, kaleidoscope images from the flowers that he did and several of you on the call at the time said, can, can I show you how to do that in Photoshop? Sorry, Jax, covers your ear. Um, <laughs> how, how you can do that in Photoshop. So I'm going to have a crack at that next week. Uh, so if you're interested in that, then tune in. I'm also going to use another product as well, uh, Corel Photo Editing Essentials. <coughs> um, it's, um, it's a 30, 40 pound product uh, that Colin emailed me uh, this week and said, hey, I've just installed this for my kaleidoscope pictures and I'm really impressed with it. So I, I happen to have a copy of it um, so I will do it both ways. Um, I will do it with Photoshop and I will do it with um, this Corel software at £40. So uh, for those of you that maybe are struggling with Photoshop or don't use it, then you have another way of uh, looking at how you might do that. So um, <clears throat> that's me. So we're keeping it in the family. Jack's this week, uh, me next week. Um, I must invite Phil to do a presentation and then we keep it completely in the family. Uh, right, so uh, the only other thing to say then is uh, just a reminder of the submission dates uh, for the STEPS photo project. So please uh, get your pickies in uh, by, what's that, a week Friday? Uh, so you've got another week. Uh, good. Okay, uh, unless anyone's got anything else, anyone else want to mention anything? 
Okay then. In that case, I will say ta-ta until next week. And uh, thanks everyone. Thank you, Jacqueline, again. Really do appreciate Thank it. You, Jack. Thank, really you. Thank you, Jack. It's really good. Thank you, guys. And, uh, I'll see you all um, next Bye. week. And if the recording has recorded everything this week, <laughs> then I will post everything on YouTube. <laughs> well, well then, have fun then. <laughs>